That's good. JK doesn't want no, to talk about no, that. I'm just trying to count how many, that's all. Props. Plenty. Well, there's 36 players, remember, so add a couple of extra. Uh, well, Lansdowne Road on the weekend was unbelievable. It was the spot you wanted to be this morning in the European Cup final. La Rochelle going back-to-back -back against Leinster. It's the Heineken Cup final 2023. We are ready to go. Trying to take a short and Jack Hunter race away. Back inside to Dan from Dante, and it goes quickly, Rothburn, and it's in the corner, and Jimmy O'Brien has left the second try, this press pass to Sheehan, Dan Sheehan gets his second try, it's one way traffic, La Rochelle are being blitzed, short pass, Dante, he's so dangerous, Dante is so dangerous, and it goes, there's room on the left here, they get the short pass to Jenny, they are fighting back here at the Aviva Stadium. Keep it tight for the time being. John Henry Cologne! Can he get it down? George Henry Cologne is going to try for La Rochelle. Amazing achievement. And it goes from Hastoy. La Rochelle, Heineken Cup champions once again. Oh, look at the scenes on the pitch. Players, coach and staff. The Lancer players down on their hands and knees. They actually are stunned. Stunned and so am I after that first 20 minutes. What a comeback. 17 nil down in the first 12 minutes. That was a great game of rugby, and if you haven't watched it, I urge you to go and see that. Mills, when you saw the crowd, 55 oh. odd thousand people there screaming, and the rugby matched it, it oh, matched the atmosphere. Yeah, it certainly did. You know, during the day, packed crowd, beautiful stadium, and like you said, Chef, that, that game was awesome. Uh, two contrasting styles, and in the end, uh, La Rochelle come over the top. It's Ireland. It's Leinster's Ireland, right? Let's be honest about that. I think 13 of the 15 players, JK, are Ireland. And they played like Ireland, the way that they played, the speed that they played. But in the end, La Rochelle, what did they do? They rolled out their bench. And what did they do? And they showed it when they were here last year against the All Blacks. They brought line speed. And this worked for large parts of the game. It just They just kept coming forward, kept coming forward. But we're aware of this. We understand it. But this is the sort of challenge that we're going to face when we get to a Rugby World Cup. This sort of line speed, we'll have to deal with it. We'll have to have a good and, and smart kicking plan to slow down their defence. Make sure you don't make errors in behind the advantage line. What really happened, it was interesting about this game, was they found a way, La Rochelle, to then expose it. They started playing the second man players. You had guys coming with depth and running off shoulders, and you started piercing in behind the defensive line. Jonathan Sexton was not playing in this game. So all of a sudden, they lost a little bit of their control, and... I think you saw, this is Ireland and the way they're going to play, and this is France and how they're going to play. To your point, it's about our ability to counter them. Do we beat them at their own game, or do we have to come with our own style? Well, two of the best nations, right? If, if you're going to talk about the All Blacks, and if we're third favourites at the moment, you know, Ireland and France, I reckon, have done an amazing job. Yeah. Both very different styles, Mills, and I think the organisation of Ireland or Leinster or whoever it, it looks like, they're all playing a similar style. The thing I like about France is actually just the size of their forward pack. Mm -hmm. And at some stage they just go, we are just going to be full on and really, really aggressive. But they've also got some really good ball carriers. So I think that's a, a really good game and I'm sure the All Black coaches will be watching it because they are the two styles that you have to cope with. We're going to get we're going to get that all the time. It's our ability to be able to handle the fact that we're well behind the game line. That, that's where we've come unstuck. We've almost gone into it every time we go, how do we beat the rush defence? How do we it's not we're going to get beat that like that all the time, but how do we then react? Okay, take the pressure off ourselves, go to our kicking game to then try and apply the pressure on the other side. That's where we've really lacked over the years. We've almost thought, let's try and beat this this, this rush defence, beat this rush defence. We've got caught. Oh, oh, we're not, not sure what to do. Let's just keep trying to beat it. And we've almost got ourselves into trouble. Is, do we have the discipline, similar to what we're talking about with Clayton McMillan, mm -hmm. to then kick the ball away and go and feel comfortable again? Well, actually, you know what? We're under pressure because we're being caught behind the game line, but we're now going to put it on you and see if you can get it out of your half. Yeah, I, I think for me, this is, this is where we need to take our learning from what we did last year, what we learnt in that Ireland series through the course of the season and decide exactly how we're going to go about winning this Rugby World Cup. And we've had examples of what we're going to face, like you've just talked about. And for me, 
It's going to be our ability to execute under pressure and skill. And that's why, and I go all the way back to guys not playing in this contest <laughs> on the weekend last night, because we need pressure and pivotal moments and pivotal games and your ability to execute under pressure. And that opens the big games. That's why that competition and our future of a Heineken Cup is... It, for, you know, you've talked about us playing different styles is so critical. I'm going to use a word that Jason Ryan used last week, fellas, trust. So while it might have hurt losing against Ireland and why it might have hurt losing against France a couple of years ago, we know. We've just watched a final, a European Cup, uh, Heineken Cup final, and they played exactly, so now they're being predictable. We know we've got to trust this group of players to go, we're going we're gonna to so have trust a mix. Them as to why they've decided the, the rest period. The rest people. Trust them for the Rugby World Cup year, guys. Come on. And then we'll come yeah, back and once we've won it. that's worked every year in the past, Mills. That's worked hey. every year in the past. Oh, well, while these guys continue the argument, or as JK calls it, a debate, uh, we've got a beautiful story coming up with Campbell Johnston and still plenty more to come on the show. Stay with us. In Southland today, we're here with Campbell Johnson and him coming out this year is um, really a watershed moment for our rainbow communities and I think for rugby to actually say that you can be an all black and identify whatever sexuality or gender um, and you're going to be okay. Um, and I think it's opened the door of possibility for people to see themselves in a game that maybe they haven't or couldn't. It was an interesting relationship with sport and, uh, and my sexuality because I had the sport, the, the rugby that I'd go to, that I just loved playing and loved being around, it gave me so much joy, so much excitement, so much, you know, just everything, it was my world. And then I'd go home and that same sport, because I wasn't being honest, and wasn't being able to be truthful out there, was giving me all this anxiety when I went home. And I'd go back to training and it would all just go away again. So I had this sort of evil battle between it all. And to me, that didn't sit right in my own ideal image that I had of what an All Black would be. And so I would push that away and push that deep down inside and I would deal with it and, and, and just run from that image because I was scared that the side of my sexuality would derail my whole goal of being an All Black. And I'd like just make this point very, very clear that your goals and your aspiration is not determined by your, your sexuality, your religion or your race. It's, 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 it's nothing to do with that. It's determined by the effort and, and the the time and the courage and the perseverance that you put into that goal will determine the outcome for you. You know, the enjoyment you get from the game is so great that, that it just was not going to happen for me to give away the game. So I decided to um, tell someone and uh, I decided that I'd tell my parents. It's funny because you build these things up in your head and in reality, they're probably not as big as you think, but you do, you compound them, you build them up in your head and you think, oh, this is gonna be, you know, a disaster. As I told my parents, and it was um, it was very surreal. And it's just like I just told them that we'd you know run out of milk, and they sort of just like, oh yeah, okay, that's fine. We still love you. And I was like, oh, okay, well if that's all good, we can <laughs> all move on. Everyone is equal on the field, and it's played with respect in the regards to the equal. No one really has a concern or anything about your sexuality, your religion, your your race. It's all about the sport, and that's where it should be. You know, we talk about the, the simple word of respect. Respect to your teammates. You're playing like a girl, you're playing like a sissy. That, that, that doesn't need to come into the whole realm of bringing team members up a level. They understand that, that everyone will get it wrong now and again. You know, the main message, we want to keep trying. Because sport is, is, is a great thing. Like, it's great for, the, great for your mental health, it's great for your health, it's great for making friends, you know, uh, keeping you active and, and happy. It only helps one person when I mean, it's one person back in sport, one person feeling more comfortable in their own skin. That's, that's wonderful, you know, it's, it's, it's been worthwhile.